Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we're going to talk about yet another standard transfer element. We're talking about the I element or the integrating element. Okay? So our topic today is the integrating element. Integrating element. Well, you know, what is the integrating element? Yeah, I element. For short, I will try to explain again at a, with an example. Huh? Let's say we have a big container. Hmm? Let's say we have, let's say we have a pool. Well, why not? We have a pool. Hmm? So we have a pool. The pool has a certain area. Yeah? And we can fill it up. So this is our pool. Located somewhere in the garden of our big house, of course. Yeah. So there is a base area of the pool. Let's say this is 10 square meters. 10 square meters. In springtime, we're going to fill this pool with a hose. We're adding water. Winter is over. We are adding water, certain water flow, let's say liters per second. Yeah? And then we are going to rise, the water is going to rise in there. Yeah? Of course. Yeah? Here we have a certain filling height. And I want to know the dependency of the height from the already entered water. Okay. So how do we calculate this? Well, the result shall be the height. And of course, I need to summarize all water which was already filled in up to now. So from the, I have to integrate. This is why it's called integrating element. Yeah, I have to integrate from the beginning to the current time and all what was in between. I'm summing up all water which was already entered. This is the volume of the water. And if I have the volume of the water, yeah, I have to divide it by the area, then it is the filling height. Yeah. So here it's a factor one divided by A. This is already the typical structure of an I element. Okay. Integrating something Weight it with a factor, and this is the result. So let's have a look. If we have a look at this as a transfer function, okay. So there is our element. This is an I element. The I element has a certain input, and the I element has, of course, the output, the resulting output. So that's xO from t. This here is xi from t. Taking into account this one here. Yeah. By the way, so this would result then in one tenth. Yeah. Integrating 0 to t. Point. Let's have a look at the at the units here. This is square meters. We said this is liters per second. So we have liters per second and square meter. Yeah. Liters are cubic decimeters. So the result would be millimeters here. Then this one tenth is correct. Yeah. If I enter this in liter per second, this would result in millimeters. So what is the input here? Yeah. The input is my filling xi from tau in this case because it's a running variable yeah? because I need to summarize up to t yeah? and this here is xo if I now write in this as, as a transfer function just with xo's and xi's yeah? it will look like this 
XO equals, now I have some factor, Ki, and then I have the integrating of the input variable up to the current time. This is the transfer function of an integrating element which is summarizing the input. That's an integrating element. Okay. Weighted with some factor, that's it. Let's again switch to the Laplace area. So xi from t will get xi from s. xo from t will get xo from s. Yeah. And the transfer function g from s we want to know. Let's transfer this to the Laplace area. xo will get xo from s. Yeah. ki will remain constant. Yeah. And then Integrating something would be a division with s multiplied by the input function. This is, yeah, this is the equation for integrating element in Laplace area. Yeah. We know the output is the input multiplied by the transfer function. So this is the transfer function, gs. This means the transfer function of an integrating element, gs, is ki divided by s. Yeah? And often we are not writing ki, yeah? often we are writing 1 divided by sti, with ti equals 1, one divided by ki. Why this ti we're using? I will explain afterwards. Yeah? It's because I can see it. This ki I cannot really see it. This ti I can see. Yeah? We will see it when we... We will see if we see it. So what does it mean for the transfer, uh, for the frequency response? Yeah? G, we said we can formally just exchange S with Ti, yeah, it will look like this. Yeah. How does it look like? Yeah. Let's have a look in our area or in the imaginary field. This is the imaginary axis, yeah? this is the real axis. How does this look like here? Hmm? Well, 1 divided by j. Yeah? You know what? 1 divided by j yeah? equals j divided by j multiplied by j. I have just, just expanded. Yeah? This is j squared, and since j is the square root of minus 1, j squared is minus 1. Yeah? So this is j divided by minus 1, and this is minus, minus j. Okay? So this here actually is minus j ki divided by, yeah? and this is minus j 1 divided by omega ti. Okay. So it's minus j. So it's minus here. Yeah. And we end up here somewhere at 1 divided by omega ti. Yeah. And if we want to draw it as imaginary number, it would look like this. Yeah. We are variating the length of this. Yeah. How do we vary it? Yeah. The, 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 here we have minus 90 degree, always. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So let's have a look. Yeah. Let's have a look. The absolute value equals, well, it's the absolute value of this, and this is 
ki divided by omega equals 1 divided by omega ti. Okay, this is the absolute value. This is the length of this. this uh, and the argument is always minus 90 degree. Uh, so what is happening then if we have an omega of zero? and an omega of infinite value. Omega zero means, ooh, look at this, divided by omega, so the absolute value will be unlimited. Okay? Omega infinity the absolute value, something divided by a really, really, really big number is zero. Eh? So the absolute value, infinity, is zero. Hmm? Well, it looks interesting. And then the argument here is the argument of g, j zero, is minus 90 degree, always, and the argument of g j unlimited is always minus 90 degree. Yeah. So this is our situation here. Yeah. These are the extreme values. Yeah. So let's switch. Let's switch to body plot and step response. Let's have a look at this. Yeah. So we're talking about the I element we said. We said our transfer function of the I element, yeah, we have just derived it here, yeah, g from s equals ki divided by s equals 1 divided by sti yeah, with ti equals 1 divided by ki. Okay. The frequency response, we said, is a coding ki divided by j omega equals 1 divided by j omega ti. Okay. And we said the absolute value, the absolute value of is ki divided by omega equals 1 divided by omega ti. Okay? And the argument is always minus 90 degree. Now we have this summarized here at this page. Okay? Now we can start to think about step responses, frequency responses. Step response. I'm going to repeat this in every video. Yeah? You can always imagine that if something is not changing, the frequency is zero. And if it's changing very fast, the frequency is very high. Yeah? And if it's jumping like here, we are reaching infinite value. Okay? So, what we have learned? At frequency infinite, the absolute value is zero. At frequency zero, the absolute value is unlimited. And this is here reflected yeah, by the step response. Yeah. If we are thinking about filling in our, our pool, yeah, if we have nothing filled in up to now, it will remain zero. Yeah. Then we are starting to fill in. We are starting to fill in. And we said, yeah. We have 10 square meters. We have 10 square meters. And we fill in now one liter, one liter per second. If we have filled in 10 liters, 
we have exactly one one millimeter height here because these 10 liters are filling these 10 square meters with exactly one millimeter height. One millimeter at a square meter is one liter. So this means after 10 seconds, I have a result of one, one millimeter. After 20 seconds, I feel two millimeters. After 30 seconds, I feel three millimeters. After 40 seconds, I feel four millimeters and so on. So it is rising. The water level is rising with a constant speed. And this is the typical behavior this is the typical behavior of an integrational element. This is the step response. And one interesting thing here is, yeah, this time here, this is Ti. Yeah. And in our example, Ti was 1 divided by K. Ki was 1 tenth. Yeah. So Ti was 10. And really, it is 10. Okay. So this is why often the integration time is used because you can clearly see it in the step response. You're recording the step response of I element, pack, you can see Ti. Okay? You know already the parameter. If we have a higher in rise, yeah, then it will result in rising steeper. Let's say we're not filling in one liter per second, we're filling with two liters per second. Then we have already, after five seconds, we have already one millimeter. After 10 seconds, we have two millimeters. Yeah? Also here, at Ti, we're exactly reaching the input value. Okay? Here is the input value is one, we are reaching after Ti one. If the input value is two, we're reaching after Ti two. So it's simply going, we're filling faster. No? Good. Let's have a look at the Bode plot. Yeah? And this is easy. Argument is easy because it's always minus 90 degree. I can immediately draw it. Oh, let's just close it here also. So we have minus 90 degree. Yeah. This is easy. Now, what's happening here? We know at low frequencies we are high, we know at high frequencies we are low, but how? How? Yeah? Let's think a little bit about this. When yeah, is this term is getting 1? Yeah? This is getting 1 if, if omega equals 1 divided by Ti. Yeah, equals ki. Yeah. In our case, this is a tenth. So here, at a tenth, yeah, we are at the one line. Yeah. This is the so-called Durchtrittsfrequenz in German. Yeah. Pinching frequency. We're pinching, we're pinching the one line at exactly this frequency. Yeah. So here have this omega d, yeah, and this omega d is this. Yeah. Let's think about what is happening if this omega is smaller, yeah, 10 times smaller. If this here is 10 times smaller, yeah, this remains constant. If this omega is 10 times smaller, this is 10 times bigger. So we are here. If it's 100 times smaller, yeah, we are here. If it's 1000 times smaller, we are here. Yeah. And the other way around, if omega is 10 times bigger, yeah, this is only a tenth. So we are here. If it's 100 times bigger, it's a hundred. If it's 1000 times bigger, it's, we are at a thousand. Yeah. So what is here resulting is a line, linear decline. It only looks linear because it's double logarithmic scaled. Yeah. This is the frequency response of an I element. 
this frequency is fixing the line where it lies. Yeah? If the eye is something else, yeah, this line will simply shift to the left or to the right. Okay. This is how an eye element looks like. The mouth behind, yeah. example, mouth and step and frequency response. Second pure element. We said there are three. Yes. And the counterpart of the mathematical counterpart of an integration is the derivation. Yeah. And that's exactly the next time, the next pure element, the derivation element, or called short D element. How a D element is working, we will get to know in next video. Okay. So next video, third pure element, D element. For this, uh, for this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.